Hey you, what is going on everyone? So the Raw after WrestleMania, it's finally over and to be honest with you, I was expecting a lot from this Raw that I did not get. You know, if you have low standards, then this was a good Raw, but I feel like my expectations are just way too high nowadays and that is not good because I don't end up enjoying the show. Sure, the show had some good spots. But I'm not gonna be completely negative because this is not the wrestler's fault, this is obviously the writer's fault. And instead I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna focus on the results of the actual show instead of just being 100% or 90% negative of it. First and foremost, the crowd was awesome and it was obvious that when Roman Reigns came out, the volume of JBL, Michael Cole and Baron Saxon went way up so that we don't hear the actual crowd. WWE, you're clever. No, you really are clever, bro. I've been watching for 15 years. I could spot you a mile away, or I should say from the TV screen. But honestly, the crowd was great. The show itself, I'm gonna say that the show was like 80% good. And this is because NXT basically invaded the freaking show. Alright, we had Enzo and Cass with the back segment of the night. We had Baron Corbin versus Dove Sigler. And we also had the debut of Apollo Crew going against Tyler Breeze. And it amazes me how Tyler Breeze is just basically jobbing for everyone in the main roster. He might as well just go back to NXT and actually stay over there because they were doing a hell of a job with him down there instead of all the way up here where he's just losing against everyone. The show started off with Vince McMahon giving control to Shane just so that he could prove to Shane that he's just crazy and he will not be able to handle all that responsibility. We had the New Day defeating the League of Nations in which afterwards Sheamus was cutting a promo in which he stated that the League of Nations has not been successful because of the weak link in the team and the weak link in the team is Ken Barrett so what they do is they just destroy him out comes the wire family the wire family clear the ring out by taking out the League of Nation and the crown is chanting thank you Wyatt I'm gonna tell you right now this segment could have gone a hell of a lot worse than what it actually was but it was okay if it makes the wire family look a little bit dominant then good I think the wire family needs it so Moray gets a mic and I have no idea what she said. I just know that Sasha Bank came out and Sasha Bank to just be her. We got a Sasha gonna kill you chant. And yeah, this was just a squash match. Next one, it was also another squash match. We had Apollo Crews making his role debut against Tyler Breeze, in which of course he won. And again, I just don't know what they're doing with Tyler Breeze. Out comes Roman Reigns afterwards. A uh, Roman Reigns gets booed out of the building. Roman Reigns offers an open challenge. Out comes Chris Jericho, followed by AJ Styles, followed by Kevin Owens, followed by Sami Zayn. These guys start fighting each other and all you see in the background is Roman Reigns smiling, but that smirk that he does, it looks so freaking fake. Oh my god. It's like, I cannot believe that he actually took acting class. Like, that was money wasted, WWE. That smirk that he put, it's so fake. Again, I don't want to be just mental, but it's just, I've been watching for so long. I know when something is just so freaking fake. But anyways, in the main event, we'll have these four guys battling it out. As I stated earlier, Baron Corbin made his debut and he went against Dolph Ziggler. This went into a double count now. We get Zack Ryder coming out and he gets a huge pop and a very big chant of you deserve it. Ultimately, he loses the title against The Miss. Out of everyone, seriously, out of everyone, why do we have to have The Miz as the Intercontinental Championship holder? Like, why? Then we see this four other times and it wasn't successful. Why do we have to go through it again? Why he didn't instead face a Dolph Ziggler or, I don't know, just a random guy, just somebody random instead of freaking The Miz? We had a segment with all the women in the ring in which Charlotte was presented with the new WWE Women Championship. In the end, everyone walks out and Natty ends up challenging Charlotte 
for a title match but all we get is a tease where Natty puts her in the sharpshooter but Ric Flair goes in for the save. As always a very sick and tired of Ric Flair just interrupting in every single match or in every single segment. My god. But I guess that's the point. They're heels so you know it's something supposed to be annoying. The Dugly boys defeated the Uso. Of course they did because they lost last night. Remember the 50-50 booking? You lose a night prior then you're winning tonight. Don't worry about it. I think the Dugly boys should have won last night and tonight but nonetheless the back segment of the night was followed by Enzo and Cass coming in after the Dugly boys and challenging the Dugly boys but ultimately they did not accept the challenge but hey we got a great NXT style promo and Enzo and Cass are finally in the main roster baby how you doing now before the main event took place Sami Zayn was attacked by Kevin Owen in the backstage area so Shane McMahon had to find a replacement for Sami Zayn for the number one contender Fatal 4 Way. That replacement ended up to be none other than Cesaro. That's right, Cesaro is back. I reported this over the weekend that he was coming back very soon. It was expected that he was going to be at WrestleMania under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. But thank God he wasn't on it because then it would have just been a waste. But instead we got him in the Fatal 4-Way match and it was pretty good. The match was actually definitely match of the night. It was an awesome match. If this show gets an 8 out of 10, it's because of this match. And because of Enzo and Cass and the Dugly Boy segment. In the end, we had AJ Styles hitting Chris Jericho with the style class and for once Jericho actually stayed down for this move and AJ Styles became the number one contender for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship that's right so expect AJ Styles to go one-on-one -on -one with Roman Reigns for the actual title I don't know what they are doing but I like it I like it because I didn't expect AJ Styles to win it I don't expect AJ Styles to actually win the title anytime soon but I also did not expect him to be competing for the title anytime soon so that is interesting and if the writers are putting Roman Reigns to go against somebody who is a top face in the WWE does this mean that he is actually gonna turn heel finally that is all I have for you guys for this review and result video for a show that was and is supposed to follow Wrestlemania this show could have gone way much better the only thing that it had going for it is the fact that, that NXT like I said it was basically invading every single hour of the show to just spice it up a little bit but anyways guys thank you for the support on all my recent videos if you haven't checked out my wrestlemania review check it out if you need to get update on recent top news and breaking news subscribe to my channel so you don't miss none of that we are still on the road to 300 subscribers thank you guys for watching macho tiao dick